and this is just a quick tutorial to look at how we can use NCloth to make um, complicated blend shapes. So let's say we've got something like uh, a cell like this that has all these extensions and we want it to assume a spherical shape. Then we can use NCloth to make the target shape. Um, so we're starting with something like this. Of course, you could animate in the opposite direction too. You could use this to grow these out. Um, but let's look at how we do this. So I'll just delete all of these things here. Start from scratch. So we have a model that just looks like this. And I just extruded out some faces with some divisions uh, to make something like this. And I added this one extra division um, to look at a secondary branch and how it handles it, but also what the limitations are of something like this. So you can see it's not smooth because I added it after the first smooth, so it doesn't look exactly right. When I hit three on the keyboard, it looks okay. So what we're going to do is we want to make this into a spherical object. And we could do something like this using uh, a deformer like shrink wrap and use a sphere to shrink wrap this to it. But it might be easier once you get it set up to use something like uh, an end cloth. So let's give it a try. So we'll select this and just make sure my history is deleted and I've frozen my transformations. And we'll go into our FX menu and create an end cloth just at the default settings. And then I'm going to change the end cloth preset to water balloon. Okay, so if we just play the animation now, make sure in the timeline, right click, playback speed, play every frame, max real time. Okay, so you can see. And I'm acting in an interesting way. Um, this is actually a new object. It's the output cloth of the end cloth. So you can see it's not smooth anymore. I can still hit three on the keyboard to smooth it. Still calculating on the unsmooth method, but it'll just look more smooth. Okay, so first things first, we don't want uh, gravity to take hold and pull it down. So in the end cloth shape <clears throat> under dynamic properties, we can say ignore set solver gravity, ignore solver wind. And it's just floating because it just is. So down here under pressure, we can use um, the pump rate to inflate it. So we can leave the star pressure at zero and turn the pump rate to a high value like 100 and starts to inflate and it floats off. I found that it works better if we go back up to uh, under dynamic properties, under scaling relation, change this to world space. And just let it inflate. And we're just trying to allow this to turn into a sphere as much as possible. There are different things we could change here, although this is doing a pretty good job. Obviously, it's making it a little too big, but that's okay. Um, we could, uh, here under quality settings, turn on sort stretch links, trap check. This shouldn't be a problem here. That just, trap check means if, let's say, this vertex got stuck inside the body, it's going to check for trapped vertices and try and push them out. But since we're pushing everything out already, it shouldn't be an issue. So other things, what can we check? Incompressibility and air tightness. What happens if we turn air tightness to zero? This is in the pressure settings. You can see that the little extensions aren't uh, flattening out as much because the air, I guess, is escaping elsewhere. Um, so I'll turn that back. Incompressibility. So what if we turn that to zero? 
interesting. I don't quite understand why that would happen, but let's change this to a high value like 20. Okay, so it's not really making a big difference for us. Just go back. So yeah, we started at 20. We can also look at here under dynamic properties, there's stretch resistance of one. So what if we put stretch resistance to zero just to let it stretch as much as it wants? It's something else because there's nothing linking these bits that are close together. And usually a stretch value or compression value of zero results in strange results. So if you want something very low, you can try a 0.1, for example. So there'll still be some resistance act a little better. Not good. Let's try high value, say 10, or at least a higher value. And we're kind of running into the same issue. These little things are not uh, compressing, or sorry, uh, stretching to go flat. So we'll go back to one. Okay, so that's kind of working. You can see it doesn't really work on our little extension here. So if you have a more complex model, this might, you might have to do this in stages or something. I'm gonna try and change the restitution angle. So restitution angle, let's give us a tool tip here. No. So restitution angle has to do with, if it's deformed past a certain angle, um, does it stay in that form? Think of a piece of sheet metal if you sort of waggle it, it will deform and bend. But if you bend it too much, it will bend and stay in that position. It's exceeded its restitution angle. I don't think this is going to make a difference here. Okay, uh, bend resistance, no. Input mesh attract. Rest length scale. Why don't we put this at a lower value and see? It starts at rest, so it'll probably shrink down suddenly. Or no, not at all. Getting kind of a different reaction. Let's set this to one. So it's happy at its state of rest. Okay, so we can keep playing uh, around with this. So let's say we get it to a point like this, and I'm just going to duplicate it. So when you duplicate an end cloth, then you're just making a copy of the mesh without any connections to the end cloth there. So that's just an easy way. And then I'll duplicate the end cloth here at its beginning state. So this will be where I start. And we've created this thing now. I'm going to hide the end cloth itself, so the nucleus, the end cloth, and the object it was originally assigned to. And then this thing, I'm just going to shrink it down, maybe center its pivot, shrink it down, and get it sort of to the right size. This is going to be our target blend shape. I'm going to freeze its transformations, I think. So I'm going to undo that movement and just keep it at the scale that I want and then freeze the transformations. I just can't remember what we want here. So this one with we'll the history, freeze its transformations, and we'll create a, I'm going to put it in the middle of the world, actually. So a quick way to, to do this is just to grab it, hold down X, snap it to the middle. You can also do it up here if we go to absolute transform and just type zero, 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 and then we'll move it to the zero point in the world. So if I just move this over, we'll pop it back here. Okay, so let's freeze its transformations. And we'll go to Windows, 
animation editor, shape editor, create a blend shape, and then we'll select this thing, go to create, add selection as target, And now they share the same topology, all the same number of vertices. Uh, okay. So yeah, freezing transformation is always a problem. So I'm going to move this thing to the middle of the world and freeze its transformations again, and then just hide it. Right. So now, because it was inheriting that uh, transformation too. So by putting both things at the middle of the world and freezing their transformations, they're just sitting on top of each other. So let me unhide that thing I just hid. I can move it over here now. And if I don't freeze the transformations, it will just remember that it's at the beginning or at the, at the origin. So, you know, it's made kind of a puffer fish looking thing here. If we want to smooth this out, we can use the sculpting tool. So if we smooth the target here, it will be reflected in the blend shape as well. Sculpting tools are good for this and you can try relax or smooth, but I think flatten is probably the one that we want. So with this small brush and a high power, so you can see, let's look at this one. So that's, I can't see my mouse. So we're going to flatten out this one on the target. And you can see it's flattened out on the blend shape object too. All right, so you can do this. And again, you can see that this is still kind of the problematic one. I can flatten it, but it's not really doing what I want. I can use a relax. sort of average the position of the vertices there and kind of get rid of it that way. So you can see it's flattening. I thought using the wax fill it also works so to build up the space in between, but it doesn't seem to look at this one. It's actually not doing a bad job. So this one is minimize or removed raised area. Oh, well, look, there you go. Raised area on the surface. Okay, that one's perfect. How did I not know? So minimize or removed a raised area on the surface. So you're just sort of using a chisel to chamfer these off. Okay, so flatten or minimize seems to work well. Okay, so something like that. Get out of the sculpt tool, and if we go back to our blend shape, you can see it's not perfect. I could spend some more time doing that, but now we've got a way to animate from this to this. And let's see what happens. This guy up here. Let me just hide the target. Yeah, so it kind of shrinks down into the surface. So a little bit of setup, but you know, you could do something interesting. This looks like a type of uh, kinesite red blood cell. It's kind of interesting. So there you go. Uh, using end cloth to make a target for a blend shape uh, for this sort of abstracted cellular shape. Hope this is helpful.